Preview. Bienvenidos a todos. Welcome everyone as we continue our summer theme on this, the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. Our theme in our study of scripture is Community on Mission. This summer we are reading through Paul's letters to the Romans and his first letter to the Corinthians. Today's message is from Romans chapter 8, verses 14 through 25. And from that reading, our message today is Hopeful Inheritors. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, when you gave to us the Spirit of Christ, you saved us, making us inheritors of your reign. Therefore, in all that we encounter, we know you are present with us. And no matter what suffering we may endure, we have certain hope that just as Christ was glorified, we will be glorified with him in the healing of all creation. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn today is Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. If you look in the description of this worship video, you will find a link to a Google Doc that has the words to that hymn so that you can sing along. If you have one of our red hymnals, the hymn is number 631, number 631, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. And we are going to sing verses 1, 2, and 4 this morning. Perfect 
Completely restore, Lord, in me. Change from glory into glory till in that we take our place. Till you we cast our paths before the lost in wonder, love and praise. Our scripture this morning is from the eighth chapter of Paul's letter to the Romans, verses 14 through 25. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it. In hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. An inheritance can be a tricky thing. The division of possessions at the end of a life can divide a family for generations. Who's in? Who's out? Who is always the favorite anyway? Who could do no wrong? Who was really more deserving? Even the small stuff can set off an unintended frenzy. I remember taking a plaque off the wall at my grandma's house and seeing a little sticker on the back with the name of one of my aunts or cousins. My grandmother was still alive, but someone had already claimed that keepsake and some others, my curious search revealed. More than a decade before people started using the word FOMO, I had it. Fear of missing out. What's left? What will I choose? Is everything already claimed? Within moments, I was stuck in a scarcity mindset. I better claim what I can because there will not be enough for everyone. In his letter to the Romans, Paul helps us think a little differently about family 
belonging and inheritance. Over the past couple of weeks, we have wondered about what it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit, about being transformed in our baptism and freed from the powers of sin and death. Today, Paul assures us that those who are transformed, freed, and led by the Holy Spirit are children of God. And if we are God's children, then we are God's heirs. We are heirs of God's promises first made to Abraham, promises of land, community, blessing. God chose Abraham and his family as the family through whom God would bless the whole earth. And the presence of the Holy Spirit assures us that we too are children of God. The world may use tools like scarcity and fear to exclude and divide, but God welcomes. God takes people who weren't family before and creates a larger family. A family that will inherit not from a God of scarcity, but from a God of abundance. We are heirs with Christ of all that God has to give. And our inheritance is no less than resurrection life with God and one another. New life and a new creation that is being born even now. We don't have to wonder whether we are included because all of creation is included. And that's why our hope is not just a flimsy, fleeting hope. Our hope is an expectant hope. This expectant hope sustains us even as we experience the labor pains of a new creation being born. Even as we experience the power of sin that remains a force in this world. A power that led to the suffering and death of Jesus. A power that causes the suffering we experience now. When Paul writes, if we suffer with Christ, that if is more of a since or a because. Paul doesn't encourage Jesus' followers to seek out the experience of suffering so that we might experience glory. Paul acknowledges that we already know suffering. Suffering is a mark of this in-between time. This time between the old age under the power of sin and the new age to come, fully under the power of God's grace. Suffering remains because sin remains. We groan because we live in the world as it is but we hope because we are confident in the world that will be, the world that God is birthing. The presence of the Holy Spirit sustains us in this hope. And the Spirit not only sustains us, the Spirit leads us. Our scripture today tells us that our hope allows us to wait with patience. A better translation of that word might be endurance, to wait with endurance. Paul has written earlier in this letter that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. 
waiting with endurance doesn't look like stepping back, finding a cozy cottage where we can wait out the suffering and comfort. And waiting with endurance doesn't mean seeking out new opportunities to suffer. But waiting with endurance means a willingness to encounter suffering. And when we encounter suffering, we encounter it with hope. Accompanied by the Spirit, we enter into the suffering around us in order to share our hope. We who in the Spirit have gotten a taste of the new age to come, share that experience and that hope with others. We who have received a spirit of adoption welcome others in Christ. We remind them and assure them that they are children of God. And we receive them as children of God, as fellow heirs of God's promises. Where might that take us as a community on mission? Where is the Spirit calling us to enter into the suffering of this world? Calling me, calling you. The Spirit calls us to encounter the suffering of those who hunger and thirst. Those who lack safe shelter and adequate education. As children of God, how might we care for and advocate for our siblings whose basic needs go unmet? The Spirit calls us to encounter the suffering of those who are isolated from community. As children of God, how might we accompany our siblings whose isolation predated the pandemic? and may long outlast it. The Spirit calls us to encounter the suffering of those who experience racism every day. This past week, Juneteenth became a federal holiday commemorating, commemorating the day that word of emancipation finally reached enslaved people in Texas. This federal holiday commemorates the end of chattel slavery in the United States. Yet we know that suffering remains. This past week also marked the sixth anniversary of the day nine people at Mother Emanuel Church in Charleston, South Carolina were massacred by the white stranger the, that they had welcomed to study the scripture with them. As children of God, how might we stand in solidarity with our siblings of all races, ethnicities, and cultures? During this pride month and always, the spirit calls us to encounter the suffering of those who experience discrimination and violence based on sexual orientation or gender identity. As children of God, how might we love our LGBTQ plus siblings? And the spirit calls us to encounter the suffering of all creation. As children of God, how might we shift our habits from consumption to conservation so that we might participate in the birth of a new creation. The Spirit calls us to these places of suffering and others as we wait with expectant hope for the new age that is being born. The Spirit does not call us to be the saviors of the world, but the Spirit calls us to welcome one another as children of God, as our family, as fellow inheritors with Christ. 
And we are not greedy inheritors, scheming and scrapping for a bigger share of God's promises, worried about scarcity, excluding others because we fear that there will not be enough. Marking that, which we desire as mine and therefore not yours or ours. We are not greedy inheritors. No, we are hopeful inheritors, trusting in God's promises of abundance and new life, trusting that we are being restored as bearers of God's image and faithful stewards of all creation, trusting that the new creation we inherit will be the good creation that God has intended from the beginning. Trusting that we are all included, that all creation is included. And we hope not just that this is possible. Filled with the Holy Spirit, we hope with the expectation that God is making it so. Amen. Rejoicing in God's promises, let us pray for creation, the church, and all who are in need. God of life, we give you thanks for the waters of rain that nourish the land and sustain every living creature. In ways that your creation has been groaning in labor pains because of human subjection to decay, lead us to witness to your redemption by being faithful stewards of nature. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Liberating God, bring freedom to all who are held captive against their will. Lead us in rejoicing with all who celebrate the ending of slavery for their ancestors and who collaborate in the continuing work for justice. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Adopting God, you have called us and claimed us as your own and given us your inheritance. Fill your church with your love and your grace. Unite us in witness to Jesus' mission that we may bring your hope to any who are suffering. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Healing God, your spirit within us bears witness that we are joint heirs with Christ as we await the redemption of our bodies. Send your spirit upon all who need healing in body, mind, or soul, especially everyone on Unity's prayer list, including Wayne, Rita, Josefa, Rachel, and the family and friends of Vivian Lucci. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Beloved children of God, please offer any prayers you may have at this time, either spoken aloud in the silence of your hearts or written in the comments section of this worship video. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of glory, you have made us inheritors of your realm by the gift of your own spirit. And so we hope with patience for the redemption of our bodies in the age of resurrection. 
until we are called by Christ into that day of reunion, hold us in the fellowship of your spirit with all your saints in light. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus the Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Gathered by the Holy Spirit in the presence of Christ Jesus, let us pray together in the words that he has taught us to pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. To share with you some ministry messages, as always, I want to say thank you and to encourage you for the wonderful daily ministry that you keep doing among each other and reaching out beyond the church to your friends and family and neighbors and community. Uh, and checking in with one another, that ministry of accompaniment, of friendship, of relationship, uh, making sure that uh, we are uh, keeping each other company and checking in on our needs. You're doing amazing ministry and witness to God's love and grace. Thank you. And so with that, please let us know uh, if the uh, pandemic has affected your household finances in any way that you could use assistance there. Your church is here for you, and we are happy to provide any assistance that we are able to do. Just reach out to us. Uh, my email is there in the description of this video. Just send me an email, give me a call, and we'll be happy to have a conversation about that. Third, Unity Unity's Endowment Board once again, is offering the Zerwi uh, scholarship. Applications are due the end of this month, so you have uh, 10 more days to apply. Uh, members of the church and our partner congregations who are confirmed in ages 14 and up, there's no limit on that and up. Uh, any post high school graduation needs. The application is simple. It's on our website, www.unitymilwaukee.org. At the top, you'll find the uh, News and Events tab, and right there, you can fill out the application and submit it on our website. And finally, um, at the beginning of this month, we sent out our newsletter, and this week, we sent out another email reminder that we are really looking for people who would like to be ushers as we are making plans um, for uh, returning to in-person worship inside the sanctuary. Once those public health metrics in our county indicate uh, that we are ready for large indoor gatherings, we can only do so if we have ushers to uh, implement our safety procedures and guide us in worship. So if you are interested in serving as an usher um, and receiving that new training for the safety procedures, please call the office or email the office at unity at unitymilwaukee.org or contact me any way that you prefer. There's lots of ways to contact me. So thank you for considering that and helping us out there. Our closing hymn today is Rise Up, O Saints of God. If you have one of our hymnals, it's number 669. And again, um, the words are also in that Google Doc that is linked in the description of this worship video. Rise up, O saints of God, 
number Rise up, O saints of God, from pain and visions turn. Christ rose triumphant, that your hearts with nobler zeal might burn. Speak out, O saints of God, despair in gulfs earth's fray, as heirs of God's baptismal grace, the word of hope proclaim. Rise up, O saints of God, the kingdom's task embrace. Redress sin's cruel consequence, give justice larger place. Give me no saints of God, creation cries in Stretch forth your hand of healing now with love the weak sustain. Commit your hearts to see the paths which Christ has trod and quicken by the Spirit's power. Rise up, O saints of God. To those of you worshiping here with us after the live stream by watching our recorded worship video, thank you so very much for joining us in worship. Our live stream is about to continue our worship service with Holy Communion as Christ gathers his church together. And so if you would like to receive Holy Communion this week, please send us a message either on Facebook or my email is there in the description of this worship video. And we will be delighted to extend this table of God's grace to you live and in person, um, any way that we can make arrangements to do that. And so now, please receive God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.